Uh, I'm Albert Wood with Magnolia Fly Fisher. Uh, today we're going to be tying the uh, spoon fly. It's an epoxy spoon fly. There's one that I've tied uh, and caught some redfish on. Uh, materials list on this fly is going to be the Gamagatsu SC15 in a one uh This is a curved hook and I put just a little more curve to it. Um, and you do this so that it gives the true spoon shape. Uh, we're going to use red thread to tie with. And this is a 24 gauge wire that you can buy at any hobby store. And then the glitter that goes on here is a poly flake. It's a polyester. And this is a pearlescent that I like to use because it picks up all the different colors of the prism. And then gold, another color of the redfish favorite. Uh, and then uh, other materials we're going to use for this and tools is uh, some throwaway brushes. five minute epoxy. I want to make sure that you get the very clearest epoxy that you can get. This, uh, you got two parts. Make sure that both parts are as clear as you can find. This will help aid in making the spoon fly very clear and shiny. And you're going to need uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, a pair of side cutters, and a bodkin type too. This is a dental pick that I use to mix my epoxy up with. And the way you start off this fly, uh, you start off with a length of wire and you're going to form a wire base a lot like you would on uh, wrapping lead around some trout flies if you've done that before and you simply just go down through the hook and wrap your wire base now you want to stop a little shy of the hook eye because you've got a lot of wire coming in there to form the wire form All right. You take side cutters, clip your wire here, and you also want to clip your wire in the back. Now that's very sharp, and I always like to take my needle nose pliers and catch that in and rotate it the same way that you wrap the wire on there so that you don't have a bad edge to cut your thread. And simply tie on your red thread. And I like to go down through here and just tie it over the wire. This gives a little more color. And you can if you'd like to. Uh, you can change up the rib because you can actually see it through the, the spoon fly. You can color it with a sharpie or whatnot. Now I've cut, pre-cut some little lengths of wire. And like I say, what you're doing is you're forming a wire base. And it's two, two pieces. A large one and a small one. The large one of course will be on the outside and the small one will be on the inside. Now what I do to make these is I take a length of wire like so and I cross up the tip edge and grab it in the pliers like so very tightly. Now I use my hair stacker because it gives me the right loop. Pop that a couple times and you get a perfectly round loop for your spoon fly. Now on the smaller one, I use the old ballpoint pen or anything round. Uh, if you don't have a ballpoint pen, you can use the dental pick here and you simply pull it like so, a couple of pops, and that's going to form your inner loop. Now as you see, this wire is kind of springy and it wants to kind of spring out. So you can take spring those out a little bit and cut those ends. In doing so, it'll free you up and won't get in your way when you're trying to tie it on. Now, this is a little technique that I do to put this on. You go through your wire like so and just simply go around one side of your wire form. And a lot like pulling rubber legs down to the right the spot that you want them, you can pull that down just behind that wire. Okay? And you see that's very, you keep your tension on there and you go through and just a little bit of a figure eight. That's all that's required. Now a lot like you do on the dumbbell eyes, you can go around this a couple of times and this will really tighten up 
your wraps. Now, you want to bend this out of the way. You don't need it anymore right now. We'll take the larger loop. Here again, trim off a little bit of excess end. Same deal. Go around one leg of your wire, a couple of wraps, three wraps, and then you can pull it right down in the center. Like so. And then around. But basically what you that's it. You've got the two forms tied in. So you want to run your thread back up to the front where you're gonna tie these off. And just let it hang. Alright, now the next thing that you want to do on the inner wire, it needs just to take and form the shape of your hook. The way you do that is lay your bodkin or your dental tool down across the top, catch your wires like so, and gently bend them like this. Now that gives you the shape. And you'll just pull these in like so. Let them go ahead and let them cross up. Go around them a couple times. Now, you will take and pull the one on your right in, one on the left to the side, like so. And then, you'll take the outside loop, do the same thing with. Now you will tie it ahead of the other two. And as you look at this, you look for uniformity, uh, and we can adjust this later. Main thing is get the wire on there and get it tied down. So I'll go around this a couple times, and I really, I got some uh, 210 denier thread, and allow me to really put a little bit of tension on that, and go ahead and do a couple half inches across the top of it, so that you don't have any it to loosen up on you. All right, you pretty much basically just trim your thread, and you want to bend that wire like so. Now, you take it out of your vise, and you can examine it, and you see it's a little crooked. And so I'm going to turn around where I can look at it, and I just take my eyes and I eyeball it, and I see that this side is a little bit low. I catch it with my fingernail, and I adjust it like so and now it's ready for the epoxy uh, to be put on there and the technique for doing this is called bubbling and I'll start mixing that up this is a, a Gorilla brand epoxy that I've come to, to use that I, that I had readily at the local hardware store and of course you want to measure out equal amounts. It only takes about two to three little drops. And simply mix that up. Now here comes the tricky part, because it can get away from you. I'll go ahead and take it out of the vise. Hold this where you can kind of see what I'm doing. Once again, look at it and make sure that it's right where you want it at. And you just syrup this on there. You just rake it right across. Like so, then the bubble's gonna pop. And you just put some more on there. Like so. Now as you hold it, of course, it's just like any other semi-liquid form that it is. It's going to try to drip and make a mess. And you just keep working with it till you get a bubble. There's that side. We got one more. A 
آمدشت It's five minutes epoxy. Uh, used to, I would do this with 30, and I found out that it tend to kind of want to burst on me when I was doing it in a turner, and that just didn't work well for me. So I changed over to the five minute, and it seems to work a whole lot better. Boom. Almost. Come on. There you go. Now, that has formed a bubble. Now, the trick is to not let the bubble burst. Now, if you hold this, of course, it's going to drip and drain and run all to one end. Now, as this epoxy has sets up, I like to turn the fly like it's going to naturally flutter in the water so that the epoxy will kind of puddle on the outside edge here like so. Now to hurry and speed things up I found out that I can go ahead and do the glitter at this stage and it works real quick. There you go, start to drip a little bit. Let me get it back even. Okay. And simply dust the poly flake right there on the inside. And see that makes a very bright, brilliant sparkle. You can fish this spoon just like it is. Maybe a little bit on the top. Uh, it's caught redfish just like that uh, with those colors. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a little gold on the top of it. Because it's still tacky. We'll go just like that. Now. Just that easy. Like I say, the, the bubbling is probably the hardest technique to master on making the spoon fly. Um, now what you want to do as you're making these, and that's pretty much set up, when you mix up your epoxy uh, and you've got some still left on your little easel that you've mixed it up on, check your epoxy there and see that it's cured or it is not cured. And if it has cured, then you can go ahead and, and cut these off and make a final thread wrap here and then coat the spoon again. And it's still quite not set. Still just a little bit tacky. But I think it's formed enough that I can go ahead and what you want to do is reach right in here and you want to trim. right against the hook, right against your thread base, you can trim the ends off, just like so. Now as you see, I cut thread and it's kind of gnarly looking. If you really want to make this really look good, you reach, reach right in here with your, don't do it too much, you mess up the form of your fly, that'll work, that's good right there. And then you come in here, like so, and you put a nice red head on the fly. Trim off this tag in. Like so. Now you can run this thread back and kind of lay it on itself. Like so, don't pull it too hard because it'll just walk on you, but just gently pull it back. And the epoxy is still a little bit tacky and it's kind of setting up as we do this. Alright, that's get a nice pretty red head on it. And then come back and take your Metrilli whip finisher. Like so. Voila. Now, 
and the shape still is just like I want it. So you can mix up the final batch of your epoxy. I'm going to do the last final coat. And this fly is very durable. I've caught uh, 10, 12 redfish on it, and it looks kind of gnarly, but it's still catching fish. This is where you're just kind of dob that on top because the underside is, is fine. It's just like you want it. You can brush it over one little nice brush just to have a nice smooth finish. Just coat that on top, like so. You can reach up there and get cover your thread wraps, like so. All right, that's pretty much on there. And just kind of let it puddle just a little bit, gently. Kind of coat your brush with it some. Now, if you've worked with epoxy before, you can take a little cigarette lighter and warm this up. And any little air bubbles, little air pockets come out, and this will also make any epoxy that's kind of sticking up lay down. But that's pretty much it. That's how you make the epoxy spoon fly.